Hey guys, it's your CHS counselors. I'm Ms. Goldman. I have all students who have last names A through G. And I'm Ms. Johnson and I have students last names H to O. And I'm Mr. Cummins with students with last names P through Z. And we know that you are so stoked to be watching another counseling registration video. Woohoo! We're just gonna take a couple minutes to walk you through the junior course selection sheet and hit the highlights to help you pick out your classes for next year. So if you notice, there's a very hefty registration packet that comes with your courses that has A through G requirements, um, a checkoff sheet, high school graduation requirements. If you're a planner and you wanna plan out your final two years of high school, we hope you find this to be a useful tool, some sample schedules that you can look at as well as a high school graduation. So if you have um, questions about your plan or your grad requirements in particular, when you meet with us individually later in the spring to finalize classes, we will be happy to go over that with you. So hopefully this form is very familiar to all of you by now, but just a couple quick reminders. Everyone must sign up for a minimum of six classes, three classes per term, but you may take seven or eight, and we really encourage you to think about taking a full load so you can explore other electives that you might be interested in or dual enrollment classes, because um, there's lots of opportunities for you to take different classes next year. So as we run through this, I just a couple reminders. A for social science, that's the UC uh, history requirement for juniors is history. Um, you'll see an F after AP US history. Just keep in mind, AP classes are rigorous, so be prepared for the workload. So you either pick college prep US history or AP US history, and then you're gonna enter the course number. Ms. Johnson, what does the F mean? Why do some of these have F and S? So F means that is a course that ta is taught in the fall and the other AP classes that have an S after, those would be taught in the spring in term two. Got it. I think I want to So take. our sample student US is history. going to take college prep US history. Next, English. That is the B requirement for UC English courses. And for juniors, your options are college prep English 11, or AP language. So as you can see, AP language is offered in the spring. Again, just make sure you're ready for the rigor of AP classes. Um, and Ms. Goldman's student is going to take AP language. So I'm ready for it. Great. So now we move on to the C requirement for UC. So this is a little bit different for everybody. If you wanna take two math classes, um, Next year, as a junior, the sequencing codes are on top. So for example, if you're starting out in Math 3 next year and you want to take Math 3 and Pre-Calculus Honors, the codes are right there. Basically, the sequencing codes have Fs and Ss, so that Synergy puts you in the correct term for those classes. Um, if you only want to take one math class next year, the individual codes are down below. Um, and Ms. Johnson, I have a question. If I'm supposed to take pre-calculus next year and I plan on taking AP calculus, can I just take regular calculus instead of the honors class? Yes, you can, Mr. Cummins, but you should probably be earning an A or a B in regular pre-calculus and you definitely want to talk to your math teacher because the math department, um, Definitely all placement in honors and AP classes, um, you do need teacher recommendation to go in there. So we do encourage you to consider sequencing math because many colleges require four years of math um, or they strongly recommend it. So we notice on these forms, Ms. Burling has not put in which terms AP, Calc, AB, and BC are in, but by the time you get your form, we will make sure that there is a fall and a spring. Um, scrolling down to lab science. Um, as a reminder, chemistry is the prerequisite for all AP science classes. So for your D at UC lab science requirement, most juniors will be taking physics 3884, although you can take AP physics 1 3885. You do not have to take college prep physics before you sign up for AP physics 1. 
And just as a reminder, if you pick AP Environmental Science or Marine Bio, that's great, but those will not get you out of grad requirements for CUSD, which is Bio, Chem, and Physics. Okay, moving on to World Wait, Language. What's my total? One, two, three, four. I already have five classes. Okay, great. Five classes, and our sample student has three more course codes to go. So world language, to be eligible for four-year college, you need two years of the same language. So again, just like with math, if you do want to sequence, for example, Spanish two and Spanish three, you could do that, or the individual class codes are below that. So also for college, you need two years of the same language. So you would need Spanish one and Spanish two minimally, more competitive colleges, including UC, are going to expect that you take three years. That's why I'm going to take Spanish three. Okay. Visual and performing art, you need one year of this for college before you graduate. So uh, if you want to take that next year, here's all the course codes. All of these classes meet the F requirement. College prep electives, these fulfilled the G requirement, but some of them double dip. So for example, if you try to decide to take AP Human Geography, you can use it as a G college prep elective for the UC application, but it also counts as an extra history class under A. So those are what those letters following the courses mean. Ms. Goldman, is our sample student gonna sign up I don't for want any, any of these? Those. No, I wanna take dual enrollment. Okay, scrolling down just as a reminder, if you did not take PE as a sophomore, you should take it as a junior because if you put it off to your senior year, you're going to be pretty miserable. If you're playing a sport, make sure you pick hybrid PE to get that PE credit. If you are playing any sport at all and you don't want to take hybrid, please consider taking an off roll so that you do not uh, miss class for your sport. Mr. Cummins, for students in winter sports, what hybrid PE should they be taking, fall or spring? So for our winter sport athletes, we either want to have hybrid PE in the fall or if you've already done your PE credits to have your off roll uh, in term one, because the majority of your season is going to take place in term one. Great. Thank you so much. So other electives, um, these are classes that don't particularly fall in the G category, but there's lots of interesting classes to consider, like speech and debate, colleges like that, um, all kinds of options. Dual enrollment, as we've mentioned in our registration video, and also we hope that you watch the CTE dual enrollment video that Ms. Reno has put together. But if you did want to sign up for one of those classes, wow. here are the four class offerings, American Sign Language, Business, Medical Terminology, and Mexican and Mexican-American Cultures. If you do sign up for American Sign Language, because that's a college level world language, that counts for two years of a language and it would meet your requirement. And then underneath that, hopefully you all know what an off roll is by now. These are free periods that you can sign up for. So for example, if you're a football player and you want off roll in the fall, then you would pick 0011. How many courses are we up to now? I think we're at eight. Let me see. We have five, six. Seven, eight, that's my schedule. Okay, so make sure you have eight course codes. Um, what if I'm a COSA student? If you're a COSA student, put the general course code down and the COSA office will make sure that you're in the right classes in the fall. But remember to put the general course code down and that it counts for two as it's noted on the right, left. Right. right. Okay, great. <laughs> Ms. Johnson knows her right from left. Finally, and very important, do not skip this part. Please pick three alternate electives, and it is very important that you put your first choice alternate in space one, second choice in space two, third choice in space three. If you do not put electives on this form or enter them in synergy, we will be getting three alternates from you when you meet with us. So we have lots and lots of electives options on there. Sometimes classes get canceled because there's not enough interest or maybe they fill up with seniors. We don't wanna pick your electives for you. So please, please, please fill that out. And lastly, 
We need a student email that you're going to check over the summer. So if you're not going to check your Coronado email, please put down a Gmail or Yahoo mail or a parent email. We just need a way to contact you over the summer. If we have a question about your schedule, you need to sign this form and a parent needs to sign this form and you can turn it in. Either email us a copy or turn it into the front office with Ms. Redding, and then we will finalize everything during your individual appointments. Please do not stress, we start these appointments in March and we will be holding them all the way through June. So you will hear from us, everyone will meet with us. And even after you meet with us, you can still change your courses around right up until the last day of school, which is when, Ms. Goldman? June 16th. All right, everybody, hopefully you have not fallen asleep during our very interesting and informing video and we'll see you <laughs> soon. Bye.